Heaven. Hunter, how do you compare uh, the feeling around the clubhouse or the field? Whenever you're around people, teammates, how does it feel compared to years previous? It, it's it's something special. I mean, just look at the roster, and it's something to get excited about. But um, there's definitely a buzz in that locker room, and you can see it when we practice and stuff. And it's, I know it's the second full day, but it's it's been fun. How different is the off season preparing for? third base compared to the previous few seasons? Uh, it's not much different. I just take more ground balls, um, a lot more ground balls. But, um, you know, I'm glad to be back over there. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited. And how do you feel um, age 29 season? Um, what are your expectations as far as do you feel like there's another level to your game? Yeah, I feel like you you have to think that. You have to always try to get better, um, continue to work, and hopefully, you know, I don't like to put a cap on anything or set any goals. Um, just keep working hard and, you know, let that kind of play out how it is. But, yeah, I definitely think there is another level. At least I hope. Hey, Hunter, how do you look at last year just with um... – Obviously, you know, getting the late start and, and everything with uh, the shortened season. I mean, like when you you sort of take last year as a throwaway year, is it sort of a lost year? Is it um, is how do you uh, when you start looking at, you know, your performance? What do you look at? How do you factor in last year? Well, I don't I definitely don't think you throw it away. It's you know, it's a learning experience. It's a season that hopefully we never have to, you know, go through again. Um I think it was the hardest mental season that we've been through. I mean, 60 games, there's a lot of pressure in 60 game season. I mean, normally you're playing 162, you have time to kind of go through slumps and stuff in a 60 game season. You don't really have time for that, um, you know, as a team and personally. Um, so it was definitely a learning experience last year, but I'm definitely looking forward to a normal season this year. And as as players, when you guys see some of the the off season moves that you guys uh, you know front office made, um, I'm assuming there's excitement. But also, is there sort of a um, an expectation that comes with that? Like, do you do you feel like there's you know from management front office that like they sort of send the message that they, they're expecting a little bit more this year? Or um, I don't know. I mean, hats off to the front office. I mean, they made some really good moves this off season. We're all excited about it. Um, you know, I think we have high expectations every season. Um, you know, like I said earlier, looking at this roster, I mean, you can't help but get excited and start thinking about, you know, a winning a championship and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean, we have high expectations and we're excited and we're ready to get going. Hey, Hunter, just uh, curious about uh, um, the season possibly playing in front of fans. Um, what do you guys, is that something you guys, I mean, obviously you're probably looking forward to it, but what, what would it mean to be playing in front of fans if that happens? I mean, it would mean everything. I mean, fans, you know, fans are a huge part of this game and, you know, that's what, you know, part of being in the big leagues is about. I mean, going out there, running out into Kaufman. I remember when I got called up, it was a packed house. I mean, just the emotions and the adrenaline that, the fans create for players is you can't replace that. Um, so we are super excited to get fans back. Um, I know everyone's looking forward to it and we can't wait to see them. And kind of a follow-up on that. Do you remember the last time you actually signed an autograph face-to-face -face with a fan? <laughs> March 12th. Yeah, no. Yeah. When everything got shut down the day before, probably out here, about a little more than a year ago. I mean, it's crazy. It's is sad. that something you because it's something kind of you miss a little bit that that interaction that you got I mean, was that evident that you guys missed that last year? Yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely for me is the kids. I mean, I love signing for the kids. I mean, I we were all kids once. I was that I was that kid at the baseball game asking for autographs. I mean, those those are the things I miss and the interactions with them. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. Thanks, Hunter.
Hey, Hunter, when uh, obviously third base is more familiar to you since you have played it before at the big league level, but when you are making a position change in general, do you do the bulk of the defensive work in spring training or is it something you've done on your own or an instructional league? Where does that conversion, the bulk of that conversion take place? Um, well, when we, when the thing, when the move started happening this off season, um, because at the beginning of the off season, you know, it was still up in the air where I'd be playing maybe outfield, maybe first, but then when, when we signed Santana, um, that's when they told me, okay, I'm, as of right now, I'm going to, you know, be playing third every day. So that from that moment on, that's when I kind of shifted gears and really started working on third. And of course in spring training, I mean, we get a ton of work out here, but no, it started in the offseason. Hey, Heather, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm the new beat writer for MLB.com. My name's Amy Rogers, so it's nice to meet you. Uh, nice take to meet you. Um, I, I was curious a little bit about Santana. Um, what have been your first impressions of him so far this camp? And, and how do you think he can help not just your lineup, but your whole club in general? Yeah, I mean, he's a great guy, great guy to have in the clubhouse. Um, I mean, we've played against him a lot with him being in Cleveland and he's a guy that I know our pitchers didn't like facing. I mean, he's a tough out. He gets on base a lot and that's huge. Um, and we need that. Um, and you know, Cleveland, they've, they've won a lot. They went, you know, in the postseason, had a nice little postseason run year after year. Um, so he knows, you know, what that is like, what, where we're trying to go. Um, and he brings that, you know, presence in the clubhouse for us. And I mean, he's just a great guy and a great baseball player. His on-base percentage has kind of been a theme with some of the players we've talked to so far, you know, just how much he gets on base. You mentioned it. When a club adds that kind of player to a roster, um, what does that do to the other hitters? How does that help you, the other hitters around him to be able to, you know, go into the season? I mean, you, we get to watch him firsthand. I mean, we get to kind of pick his brain and, you know, see what his approach is off different pitchers. Because um, when you're getting on base, you have the right approach. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be nice to actually talk to him. And when we actually start games, like, you know, kind of pick his brain on what his approach off this guy would be and stuff like that. Um, it's going to help a lot of us. Hunter, I'm guessing you feel pretty fresh as the season's about to get started. Did, did you ever feel this good physically at any point last year, especially after the bout with COVID or as, as you look back now, did do you realize maybe the toll that took? I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean, I definitely, you know, felt a difference after COVID. Um, I hate saying it because that's it's not an excuse, but um, it's definitely took a toll. I mean, it was it kind of kicked my butt for a little bit, and it took me a while to kind of get my lungs back, get my energy back. Um, so yeah, I feel great right now. Um, and just excited to get going. Was there a point at the end of September where you felt, com and it, you don't, you don't need excuses. The numbers were fine last year, but was there a point at, at, at the end of September where you felt clear of it all and as good as you um, maybe do now? Yeah. I mean, I feel like right when the season was ending, I was, I was kind of feeling kind of back to normal um, kind of getting into the groove. I mean, cause I, I missed the first, I think 17 games or whatever. Um, so by the time I started, you know, feeling good, getting used to their whole routine, cause it takes, it takes a couple of weeks, a month, you know, at the beginning of the season to kind of get used to everything. Um, cause we're used to a marathon and last year was kind of a sprint. So right, right when the season last game ended, it's like, wait, I go home. Like we just started. So um, no, physically, I feel good and, you know, definitely excited to play a full season. Hey, Hunter, was um, was handling that sort of um, part of what you were talking about when you talk about how um, mentally trying last season was just because, you know, um, the season was so short where, you know, if you had a, a, a rough spell, there really wasn't a whole lot of time. And I mean, you obviously yours, you know, and I, what you were dealing with was physical. It wasn't really anything you could do about that either. Yeah. I mean, when I got COVID, I knew I was going to miss a decent amount of time. And then I was looking at the season. I was like, man, I'm only going to have about 40 games 
to play unless we get in the playoffs. And I definitely put more pressure on myself. I think a lot of guys put pressure on themselves because it is a 60 game season. You, you didn't have time to really go work through some slumps um, that everyone goes through um, during the course of a normal season. You didn't really have time to work through them like you normally do. Um, so I know I wasn't the only one putting more pressure on myself, but like I said, it's a learning lesson. Um, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, Hunter, that was, I mean, that was the case with, I mean, w- whether it's you or, or Mondi, Singer, Keller, I mean, everyone at the end of September, it looked like that team, and Skip talks about it a lot. You guys were about to take off. Um, how much of a uh, motivating factor was that this off season? How much of that feeds into the buzz that you guys are all talking about? Yeah, I mean, we finished on a high note last year, and we truly believe if we had – couple more weeks left to play you know we could have been in that you know playoff picture and um so yeah it was definitely exciting and ending the year and definitely with the moves we made it just adds on to the buzz around the clubhouse so I mean we're we have high expectations we want to hit the ground running and I think it's gonna be a fun fun season hey Hunter getting COVID last year and overcoming it change your perspective at all not only on baseball but on life and are now you really cognizant of it knowing you know what you went through I mean yeah it's I mean it's definitely it's a it's a real thing um yeah I'm definitely more aware of it now I mean my parents both got it and it affected my mom pretty good um but yeah I mean it's just everyone has their own opinions on it so I try to be respectful uh you know with other what other people think um I got it. I went through it and I'm fine, but I know other people have different views on it. So I try to be respectful for that. Are you kind of policing the clubhouse? Say, hey man, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we, we got enough police police around here. We have the mask police here. We're, we're in good shape. Yeah. Everybody covered. Thanks Hunter. All right. Everybody. Yeah, Thanks thank a lot. You. Thank we'll you. see you.